Uh, let me just say that um, Governor Hogan was one of the uh, few Republican governors to actually act decisively and crisply at the very beginning of this. Uh, he implemented by executive order um, our first uh, eviction moratorium in mid-March. Also, uh, uh, we have had a, a moratorium on late fees and utility turnoffs. Now, um, my committee had an, a pretty extensive briefing where we invited um, all the stakeholders, tenant advocacy groups, the business community, the banking community, and um, we found that they were uncharacteristically united in their belief that more money had to be committed to rental assistance. So uh, I and my vice chair, the vice chair of the committee that I'm the chairman of, uh, wrote a letter to the governor and we asked for the governor to extend the moratorium until January 31st, which would give us time to get back in the session to work with the administration to craft a more permanent public policy response to the to, to the constellation of issues here. Uh, we emphasized the fact that we wanted um, uh, a lot more money from the CARES Act to be dedicated to temporary rental assistance. And, um, you know, the view that we take, uh, that at least um, the majority of my committee members take and the Speaker of the House takes, is that, um, you know, typically in Montgomery County, Maryland, where I live, maybe one quarter of 1% to one half of 1% of the population is evicted. If you up that to 10% or 15%, you suddenly have a problem that's not just falling within the dry confines of landlord-tenant uh, contract law. What we're talking about in that instance would be a full-scale social disruption. I think from the perspective of landlords, it would be you know, most landlords, look, I mean, I know tenant advocates don't have this attitude. Most landlords have no interest in evicting people sum summarily. I mean, tenants who stay and pay is how they make their living. But, you know, this situation is going to catch a lot of property owners in a very tough situation. On the one hand, you know, the minute you evict somebody, you're going to have to spend a lot of money to prepare the property for the next renter if there is a next renter. And so um, it's our hope that we will work with the administration to craft a, a more permanent solution to this, uh, to this situation. For right now, though, um, everybody's on pins and needles. Nobody knows. You know, there are so many uh, unknowns. We don't know you know, what the budgetary numbers of revenues are going to be like for the state of Maryland between uh, now and January. We don't know who the next president of the United States is going to be. That'll, of course, be determined in early November, and that would color a lot of our um, policy uh, directions. So, you know, I, I think right now what we need to do is we need to put the economy in stasis, if that's possible, to hit the pause button. I think it's important, not just for tenants, but also for property owners and for small businesses who are right now worrying about being kicked out of their um, uh, place of business as well. So this is, this is a problem that if we allow a large proportion of the population to be evicted, we could have a revolution on our hands. I mean, I think it's, it, it it is not hyperbolic to look at it in those terms. And I'll close with one um, thing that I saw on in the press, CNBC, which I've never thought of as being a particularly left-wing commercial organization. CNBC reported that early in the month of July, as many as 32% of the American public had not paid some or all of their rent. Now, if these folks start getting evicted in August and in September, the whole term rental tsunami, eviction tsunami is going to come true, and that's going to be a very ugly situation. And I'll just conclude by saying that, you know, even I'm a, I'm a Democrat and I tend to be pretty liberal, but I'm also very pro-free market and I tend to be very pro-business, but this is not a business issue. This is a social welfare issue at this point because evicting 10% of the population would be a humanitarian catastrophe, the likes of which would take us a very long time to recover from. 
So that as a practical matter, landlords don't want to get rid of, I mean, look, let's say you're a landlord and you, you have a tenant who what, worked in a restaurant and she lost her job and the, and now it's August, she's got four months back rent, but she just got another job and she can document that she has a job. Uh, if you're a landlord, as a practical matter, you're going to try and work out a deal in, in most pla cases because it's it's so much cheaper to keep somebody in an apartment renting. Um, and so, yeah, technically they could be kicked out, but, you know, given where the economy is right now, if you kick somebody out of an apartment uh, unit, you're not absolutely assured that it's going to be filled immediately as you might have been a year ago. If you evict somebody in you know, summer of 2019, you're gonna fill that apartment pretty quickly. Today, not so much probably.